I have big plans for this space, big ones. Uh, whether or not they'll all come to fruition, we'll see. Anyway, chicken coop, there'll be a second one kind of right there. And there'll be two fenced yards there for the chickens so that we can get them out of the garden shed. So this area here, we're gonna put two rows here um, all the way along of apples. We're going to be putting our a raised bed garden and an in-ground garden. So lots of plans, we'll see what happens. To show you a little bit about what's going on here. I talked about before we were gonna change the look of this area and as you can see we have. So this area right here under the tarp is gonna be an in-ground garden and then we have four, sorry, um, four raised bed gardens. Behind that you'll see um, two little flat things those are going to be chicken coops and we already have the enclosure um, fenced off this chicken coop here is actually the duck coop and the guinea coop and it's gonna move back there and then you can see i've dug here and then there's another row up there um, and those are gonna be apple trees and cherry trees in the front of the house we also have um, pear trees plum trees blueberries and then uh, raspberries are gonna go in there. Hello, little babies. So these little green sprouts you're seeing right here, those are some radish sprouts. They're some of the first things to come up uh, in the springtime after planting. Um, I know you're thinking, oh my goodness, it's cold out. What is this woman doing planting? But radish are a cold hardy crop, so having them out in the cold is just fine. It has been slightly colder than normal at night, so the straw you see beside them, I have been giving them just a little extra insulation at night. Uh, beside them here, there's some onions and some shallots coming up. And I'll take you over to another bed where we've got some other things coming up. And there is a little green sprouts of the Swiss chard. Um, the kale isn't quite up yet, it's planted next to it. Those are both brassicas and they do really well in cold weather, but again, I am just giving them a little extra insulation at night, just to be sure. Carrots are not up yet and neither are peas, but they will be soon. Let's go for a quick garden tour. So this is the in-ground garden. Those are strawberries. I've been working on this structure. It's not fully done yet, but that's gonna be for climbing beans. And then we have corns, beans, and peas mixed together. This structure here will be for the indeterminate tomatoes. And where the cages are will be peppers. They're not out yet because, well, they're persnickety. Persnickety peppers need a little bit more time inside yet. And then I have some squash and some pumpkins and potatoes. And we have our raspberries and they're all doing pretty good. And then we have our raised beds and within the raised beds we have our arches up. And this guy sprung a leak so we repurposed it. 
And that's a quick garden tour. My tomatoes are on a flat cattle panel and uh, the reason why is I have indeterminate varieties which means that they can grow over seven feet tall some of them they need support a tomato cage is not going to do it so what we do here and I'll find you a really good example <clears throat> this one here as you can see, anything below the bottom part is cut off. And the reason for that is to prevent splashback, which causes blight and stuff. When water gets onto the bottom leaves, it can cause diseases and stuff. So the easiest thing to do is actually cut everything off below. And then as it grows up, you're just tying it off. The top part is what's gonna to continue to grow and where it's going to set its fruit. A very quick video about the arches and um, the trellising for a few people. So on the bottom of the arches, I have melons on this side. They will not climb on your own. You have to train them. And then you start to weave them through as they go up. Once the fruit is set, you will need to support the fruit with something. Old pantyhose is a good one. This here is a middle trellis and I have beans on them. You won't actually do anything for this middle trellis. The beans, they're climbing beans. They will climb on their own. Nothing to worry about. The trellis behind is cucumbers. Again, cucumbers will climb on their own. They might need a little bit of help in the beginning, but you don't need to do anything else. They will figure it out on their own. There's a bee busy working in my female flower. Okay, so how do I know it's a female flower? Well, a female flower has the fruit that you want coming in behind it. A male flower, which is right down here, is just a flower and a stem. And you need pollen from the male flower to go into the female flower in order for this fruit to actually set. If it doesn't happen, this will just wither up and fall away. So because we are new here and I haven't seen a lot of pollinators, funny enough there was one when we just started the video at the top there, uh, I actually hand pollinate. You go into the male flower with a paintbrush, swish it all around, into the female flower, swish it all around, and then you hand pollinate and you end up with, ta-da! I hand pollinated that one because there wasn't many bees around. Can you hear that little clicking? That is the sound of the tomato hornworm. And if you look carefully, you can see his little horn. Now, 
Uh, it's been raining a lot lately, so I haven't been out to the garden as much as I'd like. And I noticed last night that a whole bunch of my branches were looking like this. And that is typical signs of a tomato hornworm. They usually like to hang out here, say on the bottom of the stem, and they blend in. They're very difficult to find. Uh, so I found six or seven now. Um, but that's what you have to look for. So if you see that happening to your tomatoes, on the tops or anywhere on them look for these guys oh and you can see they blend very easily I finished these up today. The white stuff is grain bags. It's just to help keep the soil in. Um, and I built all that today. Uh, we will uh, get this, the compost and the soil in tomorrow and then garlic will go in the ground and this will be my garlic bed for the winter. And um, it will have sunflowers planted it, in it in the spring. And um, I think that was gonna look Really nice. I just, I'm just gonna do a quick before video. We're gonna put the goats in the garden today. Um, so this is what it looks like before they come out. And then I'll show you what it looks like after they come out. weatherman said that the snow is going to come and then it'll be above zero and rain and the snow is going to leave. Instead, more snow came and I hadn't dug the carrots from the garden yet. So my carrots are, oh look, carrots. <laughs> so, um, I am going to be digging carrots out of the snow. I thought I'd just do a quick, uh, this is what the garden looks like right now. So these here are the strawberries. And as you can see, they're all under leaf cover. In the spring, those leaves will be raked off. This is the main garden. It has been, had poop, uh, horse poop added to it and tilled under. This is the raspberries. They have all had straw added to them and I've actually put some more chips between the buds. Um, I had to cut back that lavender plant there yet, but it's been warm enough. That that's probably today's job. And then um, here's the raised beds. And believe it or not, those plants at the end down there are kale and we're still eating kale. So it's been pretty nice, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> 